Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota. On this edition of Minnesota Original, writer Wang Ping's project, Kinship of Rivers, celebrates the universal experience of life along the Mississippi and the Yangtze Rivers. Emily Gray Kohler adds texture to her reduction woodblock prints of the natural world with collagraphs. Members of Prince Jabba's Soul Calypso group, Sokaholics, hail from the Caribbean, Africa, and America. These artists and more, now on Minnesota Original. Every blade of grass turns with its own angel. Every breath we make churns your heartbeats. A child becomes a father's man in the ocean's cradle. A wave is a wave is a wave, regardless our defeats. My name is Wang Ping. I'm a poet, prose writer, photographer, among all other things. This is what I wanted to do all my life, to be a writer, to be a poet. To be a poet, you have to be courageous. You have to be a warrior first. You have to be brutally honest with yourself and with the truth and you cannot lie. Our lungs harden from quartz crystals. Our lives weigh less than dust. I was born in Shanghai, which is the mouth of the Yangtze River. Then I went to the countryside when I was 14 years old and uh, to be a farmer. And to be a farmer in China is a totally different story than a farmer here. It's all machine. Everything was done manual. Life was really, really, really hard. It was really indeed a back-breaking labor, but that was also when and where I learned what it means to be with the earth, to be with the water. When I moved to St. Paul, my first uh, loft uh, was actually Tilsner Art Building. Sixth floor, the corner overlooking the entire downtown St. Paul and the uh, huge stretch of the Mississippi. And I was just so in love with the river. When I row in the river, that is the most peaceful, the happiest moment in my life. And I just feel so grateful. So I wanted to give something back to the river. We are at Yinghua Academy, and this is a Chinese charter school. So I'm here to conduct Kingship River poetry and river flag workshop. I am the waves, I crash and flow. I am the current, I make the water go. Kingship of Rivers is an international river project which tries to build bridges between the Mississippi and the Yangtze River. Now I want you to visualize the river from inside. Just anything that comes to your mind first about rivers will be your poem. The children write their own poems on the flags, and then I would string them together in the manner of the like, Tibetan prayer flags. The Tibetans believe in those high mountains. There are sacred spirits there. So they would hang those flags. So I borrowed that concept. And I thought, I want to have as many people's good wishes 
and their imagination and their creativity on that 11 by 17 fabric. Now we have like about a thousand flags from public school, from children, elementary school, junior high, high school, college, senior centers, professional art galleries and museums. My basement is basically set up for hand dye and then I have to measure, then cut, and then have to iron each fabric. <laughs> it's a lot of work, <laughs> but it's fun work. Okay, very beautiful. Children, of course, they are always children. They just create such beautiful images. Just unbelievable. I'm hoping to go for like 2,000 flags. I will install them along the river, first Mississippi. Then I will bring them to the Yangtze River next year as the gift and good wishes from the Mississippi. Then I will leave about half of them in Tibet. So all the people's good wishes will flood in the wind and will travel from the roof of the world. And uh, then I will bring the rest back here to do the final installation. They really carry a lot of power and joy. As soon as like, you unfold the flags, you hang them up, people are just so joyful and just inspired. It's really moving. This is the gift I owed you from future and past. This is my skin in the river, wild and fast. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free. Tis the gift to come down where you are to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. Simplicity's gain to bow and to bend, we shan't be ashamed to turn. Turn will be our delight till by turning, turning, we come round right. When true simplicity's gain to bow and to bend. Shan't be ashamed to turn, turn will be our delight till by turning, turning we come round. Till by turning, turning we come round. Tis the gift to be simple. Tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where we are to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, we'll be in the valley of love and delight.
collecting plant matter and um, organic objects. This grass is a nice grass. It's got this lovely curly quality. This is some sort of goldenrod or something in that kind of family. I'm gonna glue them down and make it essentially a, a three-dimensional collage and um, use that in the printing process. I'm Emily Gray Kohler and I'm a printmaker. I'm coloring in the blue sky. I'm trying to block out the colors so that I know where um, to carve at what layer. Color reduction woodcut is a relief form of printmaking where you carve away one layer of the wood and print that layer and then carve away from the, from the same block and keep printing and carving the same block away. If I'm creating something that has white in it, I'm gonna carve that away from the block first and then I'll print the next lightest color, maybe it's a yellow, and then carve away everything that's gonna stay yellow and then print the next layer and so on and so forth. And because it's a reductive process from the same block, I can't reuse it, I can't go back and print, so it's kind of a one and done process. It's fun, it keeps me on my toes. I also like the finality of it, that in the end, you know, I'm making something that I can't go back and change, it is what it is. Kind of like a painting in that sense, it's a type of printmaking that really starts to relate to other types of media that are more immediate. My work generally deals with nature in some form or another. I grew up in northern lower Michigan, pretty much in the forest. I was collecting salamanders and, you know, going and making tree forts out of real trees and so forth. I also have um, a strong connection to farming. My family has a farm that's been in our family since 1868. So I spent a lot of time between the farm and the forest, and my work has always kind of looked at elements of those things. When I come out into the field and I look for objects, I'm looking for something that has a somewhat more delicate quality. So this is a interesting little plant here. It's actually got some fun little seed, seed heads on the top here that look like, like little tendrils. I've used calligraphs in the past as a way to introduce texture into woodcuts. They'll definitely be able to run that through the press, nice and soft. Grasses tend to work well because they're so line oriented and woodcuts are so block shape oriented so that it creates a nice juxtaposition. I've got this lovely curly grass which doesn't cooperate very well but is great once I finally can get it glued down. <laughs> Basically I take any sort of textural substance that I can run through the press without damaging the press. In the animal series, I started using hay and straw a lot. This is the, the calligraph plate um, that I created for this piece. Then I rub ink into the texture and out of the texture and printed it in between layers of the woodcut. This is a messy, messy process. I'm going to apply the ink to this calligraph that we're then going to take and print as the final layer on top of a reduction woodcut. pulling the paper off the block after I've printed it. I think that's probably my favorite part of the process. It's kind of like opening a present, but it could be horrible. <laughs> I'm gonna get printed nicely. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
types of films that I've made tend to be subversive in nature. What do you do when your expectations don't work out? Rather than pursuing the hero's journey. My life, anyway, was an accumulation of things that didn't work out the way I hoped they would, and so I just started telling stories about people whose expectations didn't work out. Story is very important to my films. The, the story is always the central motivating reason that I wanted to make the film. Initially, when I started shooting animation with my friend in the barn, there was no sense that there should be an audience or could be an audience. This was just something we were doing for ourselves. And in, in, in a way, it was probably the happiest and purest period of my life in relationship to animation because it was so simple. When I was young and I was first interested in film, it was, it was live action filmmaking. I never fancied that I'd become an animator. Harvey Gustafson. I swear to you, if I hear you tell that horrible story one more time, even one more time in my presence, I'm moving straight in with Angie and Tom. Well, I guess I know then how to get my peace. <laughs> a Riding with Harv is just a sort of character study about an old couple that have been married for, I think, 55 years, and they can barely stand each other's company anymore, but they, of course, couldn't live without each other. There's a couple different tendencies in the films that I've made. One is a film that's based off of a short story. Another type would be the documentary animated film tendency in which I'll uh, get a hold of some documentary audio footage and then base a film off of that. I was going out with this young girl named Carrie. I was feeling sad, you know, because I hadn't seen her in a long time. And I decided to ride my bike to her house. She lived in, in Malacca, which is about 48 miles away. And I didn't know how to get there, so I just looked it up on a map, and I found the, probably the longest way I could have taken. The film that I first had some success with was called Bike Ride in 2000. And that was one of the documentary-style films. A former student of mine told me the story of riding his bicycle 50 miles to see uh, his girlfriend getting dumped and then having to ride home. When I saw her, she didn't smile or anything, you know. I thought maybe she'd be happy to see me, like, wow, he rode five hours to see me. But there was nothing like that. I thought, how typical, you know, this great chivalric demonstration of one's affection and, he, you know, he's riding his bike thinking of how impressed she's going to be and then she has the opposite reaction. He's so crazy, he rode his bike 50 miles. My God, I gotta get away from this guy. And she basically told me that she didn't want to be with me anymore, uh, physically or whatever. I had um, Dave King, the drummer who plays for the Bad Plus, come in and improvise a uh, track to the, to the story. That might have been one of the things that made her want to break up with me. I was just like, maybe too much. So. It allows me to improvise in the drawing process and to create a style that's much more metamorphic. It flows much more by transformation as opposed to shot making in a traditional sense. So it opens up a different way of storytelling, which is nice as well. Music has always been a big part of my films. There is a parallel between drawing and playing guitar, for example, in the sense that I am improvising the drawing off of a map, off of the structure, and I'm letting the drawings go in a kind of flow of consciousness. In the same way, playing guitar, you're working off of a structure, which is a series of chord changes, and you're trying to improvise something melodically meaningful on top of that. That happens in real time but there is definitely a parallel between those processes and the flow of ideas. Before the digital drawing technology existed, uh, there was paper. And this is my previous film, Bike Race, some 4,000, 5,000 odd drawings uh, that comprised that 12 minute film archived in this box. One thing that might set my work apart from other animated films is that I am self-taught in terms of my, my drawing skills and my filmmaking skills. I've just learned by making films and by a lot of experimentation. I think a lot of what a person does uh, creatively is compensating for certain limitations and then finding their style in the space that exists outside of their technical limitations. 
So this is a film that I've just started working on called Marcel, King of Tevuren, and I'm drawing for the first time a film on this new tablet, uh, which is a computer screen that I can draw on. Marcel is a rooster who's essentially and unfortunately acting out Greek tragedy with his son and his surroundings. One of the first things you do with a character to get your feeling for it is to do a cycle of locomotion, whether that's running or riding a bicycle or walking. Just this test right here represents a few days of work, maybe you know, 15 to 20 hours of work actually. Each film that I make takes about two years. I described animation as jokingly being like being in a sixth century Irish monastery doing um, illuminated manuscripts, like the human copying machine, just because it is so labor intensive and repetitive in a way. It's rather gratifying after a lot of work to see something come to life. Ow! People started saying, you know, your films seem like animated live action films, like you want to be making live action films. And I said, yeah, that's true. So I started sending them to live action festivals and now I've been in Sundance a couple times and you get a lot of attention for that and a lot of access to people and uh, ideas and jobs as well. I hope that people that see my films will, will feel that they see their own lives reflected in them, that there's some of the, the struggles and the joys and achievements and complications and ambiguities of life are there and that they can relate to them. And for me, it's always reassuring to find my own life in the films of other people. It makes me feel a part of something. I'm Prince Jabba, and I am a Sokaholic. This one is called Wave Something.
Miss Lady, sexy be a bit of all your walk in your body. Hey, party crashes, man, and watch him love in the shape of your back. What you walk it and you walk it and you walk it real good. The boy never walk it in a Hollywood. Many man call up to me, she'll choose. Hey, clear the way. Cool, set, loose. Y'all know right like a gypsy queen. Y'all know why not queen to see. Y'all broke up on the freaky thing. Like, pull it out here, I tell my city. Hey, y'all broke up on the party ground. Y'all chillin' with superstars. Y'all tell the other side of the one. The really, really, really other side of the one. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.